So we are getting leaks about Intel's upcoming new lore and GPUs that they are launching and these are specifically the models that they should be launching at about the price range and with a few uh, performance uh, numbers as well. Now before I get into all of these models of these GPUs, I just want to say that into launching these GPUs is really great. You know, even if you have no intentions of buying a Intel GPU ever, uh, this is fantastic because basically there's just gonna be a lot more stock of these GPUs out there in the wild. So, you know, supply and demand should balance out and help bring down uh, the overall graphics card price market as well. You know, not to mention that this price tag right here, so $400 and below, this really is the market that still needs a lot of improvements. You know, the really higher end market uh, has already decreased in some prices. NVIDIA has, uh, I believe the other day I covered how the RTX 4090 Ti is getting a price cut of about $500. Uh, because, you know, there's just a lot of stock and those GPUs uh, don't make so much sense for a lot of people anymore now that crypto mining is... Uh, well, it's not dead, but you know, now that it's severely injured, let's just leave it at that. So I'm just going to cover the sort of more boring cards uh, uh, down here at uh, at first. So the A310, the A380, these are going to be the very, very budget cards, uh, especially this one. Uh, so <laughs> only a 64-bit bus. Uh, now, this card is going to be cheap, but I do not recommend anybody to buy this card. Uh, you know, if you are in a desperate need of a GPU, please just like somehow save up some extra money and don't get this card. This is sort of going to be more of like a business card. This is a card you put in a computer just so you have a display output for a monitor, just so you can do your Excel spreadsheets, just so you can watch like a YouTube video stuff like that this is not anything for like gaming or anything like that you know even the a380 with a 96 bit bus even you know this again this is a very low end graphics card you know that you know don't expect to play anything more but like some basic browser games uh in it uh at this point now the a580 though you know now the jump the, the the price does jump up quite a bit but this you know is starting to actually look like more of a proper card and should compete uh with i believe the rtx 3050 uh let me see yep uh, there we go the rtx 3050 and the uh radeon rx 6500 xt uh, so this is a pretty good price range you know what you can usually expect from cards in this price range is you know, you could run newer games that are coming out, but they won't run great, to be honest. But, you know, a lot of older games, a lot of the esports games are going to run just fine. A lot of FPS, you can even do high refresh rate gaming. So it's pretty nice, you know. So if, if you had to buy a very cheap Intel GPU, I would not recommend going below the A580 personally. Because, you know, there's a point when you're just wasting your money and getting bad value. Uh, I would say. Anyways, uh, it's going to come in with 8 gigs of memory, which, you know, kind of the standard. Uh, it's quite a lot. You know, you, you are not going to be able to make use of more memory. So, you know, uh, pretty good. Uh, it does have a pretty high TDP uh, because the RTX 4050 and this one have a TDP of around 130. And, you know, this is quite a big increase in the wattage. So... You know, are Intel's chips not as efficient in something? I mean, probably, you know. Uh, so, uh, pretty interesting. Uh, let's move on. We have the A750 and the A770. So, the A770 specifically is going to be competing with the RTX 3060 Ti in the sub $400 price range, which is a fantastic price range. Uh, you know, that is really your sort of bread and butter gamers price range so hopefully it's a good card we don't have any specific benchmarks for it yet we just know that it has a 225 watt tdp and 16 or 8 gigs of memory but for the little bit of a lower end model the a750 that's supposed to come at about 300 bucks this thing apparently should be 
about 17% faster than the 3060, which, you know, if that's true, that's freaking amazing. And if, you know, we can get like a $300 price point, that's super great as well. And, you know, then the A770, which is the higher end model, should be even a bit better than that. You know, and at that point, you know, if you're buying this sort of a GPU, you can be running newer games at like reasonable frame rates and stuff, uh, which is fantastic. You know, so overall, hopefully Intel's new GPUs uh, work out. You know, obviously these are, this is the first generation of their discrete graphics cards. So how are the drivers going to perform? How is the driver support going to be moving forward into the future? I don't know. I personally, if I was buying a graphics card, I wouldn't buy an Intel graphics card yet because, I mean, they could easily release this generation, be like, okay, we this was not profitable, this is not that great, we are just going to stick to CPUs, and then you're just stuck with their discrete graphics card that's not really getting driver updates, uh, such as NVIDIA and AMD, which is a big deal because driver updates make games run a lot better. Uh, also, uh, the stability of games gets uh, greatly improved a lot of the time. But overall, it is really great that we're getting these GPUs just because there's going to be more GPUs on the market. Just as in a few months when the uh, NVIDIA 40 series GPUs will launch. Plus, still all of the mining GPUs and the uh, production capacity is coming up. We, like, we are entering uh, a point where we might have just too many GPUs, uh, which if that does happen would mean the GPUs would just be really cheap, uh, which would be fantastic. So overall, uh, pretty interesting, you know, uh, hopefully the Intel GPUs work out. I personally wouldn't buy them, but I'm definitely happy they're coming because they're going to be bringing the general price of GPUs down along with them.